I saw it. So we just, but we have a quorum, so we just go ahead and start and let him join whenever. Okay, great. We ready? Good evening, everyone. I now call to order the Thursday, June 23rd, 2022 meeting of the City of Sugarland Planning and Zoning Commission. Good evening, everyone. Good to see you all here, Commissioners. We've got a few items on the agenda, so we will get started. Item 2A, public comment, public hearing. Do we have anyone signed up for public comment or public hearing? All right, then we will move on to item to three, excuse me, 3A, which is consideration of an action on the minutes of the June 14, 2022 meeting. You've got the minutes in your packets. Any revisions to the minutes? Motion to approve. We've got a motion to approve by Commissioner Landine. Is there a second? Second. We've got a second by Commissioner Simeon. Any further discussion? If you'll vote at this time. I don't see the vote tally, but. So, one would think. Ah, there it is. All right, and that motion passes. Thank you, commissioners. Item 4A, consideration of an action on a recommendation of the fiscal year 2023 to 2027 capital improvement plan to members of the city council. We have, according to this, we have Andrea Broughton, assistant city engineer. Good evening. Good, come on down. Is it on? Okay. Okay, great. Okay, great. So let's see. All right. Okay, uh, good evening, Chair and uh, members of the commission. Uh, this evening, we're going to have the um, recommendation and for the fiscal year 2327 capital improvements program um, the goal of the, the meeting is to uh, why does it keep changing sorry about that review the draft list of the new projects and uh, of course you guys know if you've been on pnz for a while this is a uh, per the city charter section 5.01d uh, that we receive uh, planning and zoning commission input and recommendation to city council and city manager for the five-year cop uh, just for uh, clarification for everybody, um, any existing projects that are carrying over are not uh, on this list, including the FY22 um, in out years because they were reviewed last year. So these are just the new projects that we're adding. So um, the project development is, uh, is a pretty uh, detailed in-depth process. Uh, we prepare on the staff level a draft list um, until it, city council approves it. So there's no reference to funding um, and it's not fiscally constrained. So that means that it doesn't have um, the funding sources uh, committed to it yet. These are just the projects, descriptions and uh, justifications. Um, the sources uh, that go into preparing this list on the staff level is uh, input from city council and city staff, um, preliminary engineering reports that are done, studies, master plans, assessments, um, any development agreements that uh, trigger the need for improvement. Uh, we also receive feedback from like citizens and civic groups, uh, specifically like the uh, quarterly HOA meetings, uh, just general out, outreach from citizens to staff, uh, whether it be directly or, or via uh, elected officials. And then also um, there are some instances when uh, we are required to do some projects because of uh, regulatory mandates. Uh, for example, TCEQ, the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality may have some new mandates um, on our water and wastewater facilities that um, trigger projects to be done for the city. Um, our first um, division uh, that has a new project this year is the um, airport new project. Um, it is the uh, runway reconstruction project that would be uh, slated for fiscal year 23. Um, specifically, this is going to be to reconstruct runway 17-35 with a pavement design that is compatible with current fleet mix and critical aircraft. Um, we would make these improvements um, to the west side to comply with the FAA, FAA airport um, requirements. And um, just keeping in mind, we will um, 
do our best to minimize delays uh, by being strategic in the way that we uh, phase out those improvements and notifications to um, any adjacent affected areas. And uh, this is just a, a quick screenshot of, uh, I think everybody is aware where the airport is. The next division is the uh, drainage division. We have one new project in there. It is the uh, Oyster Creek Diversion Channel, slated for fiscal year 23. Uh, the main project goal is to remove several critical facilities from the 100-year floodplain and provide a regional solution that protects the city public safety training facilities, uh, the central unit prison site, and uh, the city, the, Sh the Sugarland Regional Airport. Um, this, uh, I apologize, the city has received um, the 0% 30-year loan for this project um, that they, uh, has already gone to city council and been um, accepted um, and approved for this. And uh, here's a, a quick map of the location of this project. Uh, the next division that we have projects for is uh, municipal new projects. Uh, the first project is the City Hall underground storage tank uh, for fuel improvements, uh, specifically the construction phase in fiscal year 23. Um, the existing storage tank at City Hall is over 16 years old. Um, the tank requires inspections from the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality um, for regulatory compliance, and the underground tank has experience water intrusion due to the aging um, of the equipment and requires necessary improvements in order to bring it back in compliance with uh, TCEQ. Uh, the scope of what will be done for these improvements will be um, the replacement of the existing piping, containment sump covers, associated concrete and sensors uh, due to water intrusion. Um, and we will also install a new leak detection system uh, that will match the Austin Parkway and Gillingham storage tank uh, just for consistency throughout the city. Uh, the next project we have is the uh, Public Works Campus Above Ground Diesel Tank Project. Uh, this is for the design and construction phase. Uh, design will begin in uh, fiscal year 23. Uh, there's two existing diesel tanks at the uh, Public Works Service Center currently, um, which are over 30 years old have definitely exceeded their useful life. Um, the TCEQ does not currently require tanks over 30 years to be uh, removed. However, many states are beginning to make this removal a requirement uh, in, in an effort to be proactive and uh, prevent any leaks in the near future, uh, the city recommends to, to have this improvement done. Um, the design and construction for the installation of uh, one 10,000 gallon diesel tank above ground storage tank uh, will include, of course, the necessary piping, dispensers, monitoring sensors, canopy, and uh, concrete pad. Uh, the design of the, I'm sorry, and that's it on that one. And uh, here, here's a quick um, location of uh, those projects. Um, the next division we have is the uh, parks, parks department. Uh, they have three projects uh, on the list. Uh, the first one is the skate park relocation to Crown Festival Park. Uh, this project will be in fiscal year 23. Uh, the purpose of this project is to uh, relocate the existing skate uh, equipment at City Park to the Crown Festival Park. Um, this will allow for uh, more synergy within the Crown Festival Park to complement the mountain bike trails um, and the proposed pump track that they're uh, gonna place there. Um, this project also includes converting the existing skate park to a covered pickleball court for daily use and potential tournaments out there. Uh, the next project we have for parks is the uh, Imperial Park Improvements Project, which is slated for fiscal year 23. Um, this will be uh, include the design of two softball fields, including LED lighting, parking lighting, and um, light for uh, trails and then uh, landscaping irrigation for the picnic pavilion and connecting sidewalks. The goal of this project is to uh, implement the remaining amenities in the master plan in order to attract regional and uh, state tournaments uh, to accommodate the growth of the city's recreational leagues, enhance local user experience, and continue building a great community for our citizens. Uh, the, the last parks project is the uh, Mesquite Park 
improvements or mesquite park renovations of fiscal year 23 and this project um, we um, park staff has been uh, you know having to repair uh, make repairs out here to the playground equipment to ensure basic safety uh, the goal is to improve mesquite park to enhance local user experience and uh, of course continue building um, a great neighborhood in the area here's a quick oversight map kind of the some of the locations of those uh, proposed projects uh, as far as the uh, streets division there are no new projects proposed for this division for the traffic division we have uh, one new project at uh, State Highway 6 and Stedler, Settlers Way intersection improvements. Uh, the northbound Settlers Way Boulevard approach at Highway 6 has history of accidents due to nearby median openings. Um, this project will address safety concerns through access management um, and improve operations by adding an additional northbound Settlers Way left turn. Um, apologize. And then there's a uh, location of it's uh, it, it in the intersection there of Highway 6 and Settlers Way. Um, the next division we have is the uh, surface water division. We have one new project uh, for that. It is the Tailfair Raw Water Pump Station Rehab, uh, slated for fiscal year 23. Um, the city owns several raw water pump stations providing um, surface water to fill amenity lakes and irrigation as part of the groundwater reduction program to meet Fort Bend subsidence district uh, regulations. The Telfair pump station uh, provides approximately 200 mg of raw water to the Telfair lake system annually. Um, the pump station is approximately 15 years old and uh, is in need of rehabilitation. And uh, specifically this rehabilitation will include uh, the intake structure address bank erosion and evaluate pump condition. And there's a uh, quick snapshot of the map of this location of the project. Uh, the next uh, division is the wastewater new projects. We have four for this one. Uh, the first project is the track two wastewater improvements uh, slated for fiscal year 23. Um, it's currently uh, Treatment bottlenecks that need to be addressed to accommodate additional wastewater flows from the development of Track 2. In addition, the project will include an upsized force main from Track 2 uh, to connect to the wastewater connection system in new territory to further con convey that wastewater to the wastewater treatment plant. Um, due to the development of Track 2 for both residential and industrial, uh, the waste, West Wastewater Treatment Plant still needs treatment improvement to receive this water from Track 2. Uh, this is the um, justification for uh, the improvements done at this site. Uh, the next project is the lift station bypass pump assessment uh, slated for fiscal year 23. The previous um, several years impacts from hurricanes and ice storms brought up the need to conduct routine um, rehab or replacement for lift stations and bypass pumps. The goal of this project is to First, do a PER to identify the current condition. Um, then each year, the plan will be reviewed based on the staff's assessments um, of the bypass pumps in the field and record any changes in bypass pump reliability. Uh, the next project is the lift station odor control PER, which is slated for fiscal year 23. Um, the city uh, maintains over 130 wastewater lift stations across the city, uh, many of which are located in residential neighborhoods. Uh, these lift stations utilize odor control systems to reduce impacts to the neighborhood. Uh, this PER will help us identify the current condition and uh, repair replacement needs um, for the odor control systems at several lift stations. Um, the the uh, specific scope of this project will be to conduct this engineering PER to replace uh, aging and defected odor control systems, specifically at uh, lift station 116, Mesquite, lift station 112, Sweetwater, uh, lift station 53, Harmon, and lift station 103, Lexington. The last project we have for the wastewater projects is the South Wastewater Treatment Plant Odor Control System Design and Construction. Uh, this is slated for fiscal year 23. 
Um, again, the uh, uh, odor control is very um, key for our wastewater treatment plant systems throughout the city due to the close proximity to residential neighborhoods. Um, the city conducted a study last year that provided uh, a recommendation um, to design and construct a full-scale odor control system at this location. Um, and therefore, uh, we will be uh, moving forward with that recommendation. Um, specifically, this project will include replacing the existing cover plate system um, over the headworks, um, drawing odorous air through a bioscrubber with an activated carbon polisher. Have a little trouble here. Let's see here. And there's a uh, quick snapshot of the uh, general location throughout the city. Um, and the last um, division is the um, water division. Uh, we have one new project there. It's the Great Wood and River Park Water System Capacity Improvements Evaluation. Uh, the city uh, must comply with the rules and regulations for public water systems set forth by uh, Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. As part of the 2021 Water Master Plan Amendment, the city analyzed uh, the River Park and Great Wood Water System supply storage and pumping capacities. Uh, the analysis determined that those areas cannot meet projected peak demands, and the study will evaluate alternatives to address the pressure and capacity demands in River Park and Great Wood and identify capital improvement plan projects and planning level costs for these improvements. And there's a um, quick snapshot of uh, that area in the affected service area. So at this time, uh, I'd like to make a request that uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission to recommend the FY23, FY27 Capital Improvement Program, new projects list to the city manager and city council. And uh, we do have um, members of each division of the um, projects proposed here to um, address any specific questions on project scope or um, anything further that you have questions on that were not included in the presentation. Thank you, Andrea. Questions for staff? Yeah, I've got a clarification question. Sure, Commissioner Smith. So um, given that this is a set of priorities and, and going forth to get approved, my what is the process if there's something else now that comes up and it needs to be brought forward to be done like in the in 2023? So and it might which may cause one of these to drop. Is there a process for that? So, as far as the um, CIP process, um, I don't, I don't think that there's a clear pathway for that. But there are um, different contingency funds and emergency funds that different departments have. I think it would depend on which division um, it would be affecting. So, would that process need to come through PNZ as well to the city council, or would that be something that would go just directly to city council? It's my understanding. If anybody uh, corrects me differently, but I believe it would go straight to city council. Okay, thanks. And, yes. and maybe on that, if you could just like high level remind everyone what the CIP process is and how that's utilized in, in connection with other potential projects that aren't CIP projects. Right. So the CIP process is. Um, Typically, every year we come with a, a five-year CIP look ahead um, that city council includes uh, city managers specifically in their budget um, and gets adopted by city council. Um, any other projects that are outside of that, maybe it's an O&M project, uh, streets improvement, street rehabilitation, that could be funded out of uh, the operation and maintenance um, costs. There's also uh, O&M funds for water and wastewater as well. Uh, there's uh, uh, funds for sidewalk improvements, um, and then there's also um, O and M for you know facilities and uh, other um, divisions throughout the city. So the CIP is not the sole only uh, vehicle to fund improvements or um, replacement needs or rehab needs uh, to facilities throughout the city to our amenities that we have. Thank you, mm -hmm. Commissioner Brown. Good afternoon. Thank you for your presentation. Just a couple of quick questions to familiarize myself with some of these items. Sure. Um, the airport runway improvement project, I'm assuming, this is probably a very silly question, you'll do this with minimal interruption to air traffic, right? That gets done. Yes. 1735 is the runway. Yes, right? yes, yeah. We, um, 
I, I've had a, a couple of um, discussions, high-level discussion with the airport, but uh, from a phasing perspective, that was a very important point that they had in their justification and, and scope that it will be coordinated to minimize um, adversely affecting anything around it. Gotcha. On the on the um, Imperial Park improvements, I, is that add, just adding two more softball fields is what's happening there? That's my understanding. Um, so you've got a number of them now. Yeah. Yeah. Adding two more. Yeah. Thank you. And then the last is just a comment, the Settlers Way intersection improvement. That's a good thing and it's a long time coming. So, um, and I'm assuming you're gonna put a turn lane in similar to what's on Austin Parkway out of HEB that keeps that traffic from cross turning. Right, so the final determination of that uh, actual improvements there um, haven't been made yet, but yeah, during this that process uh, design and, and going through with owners of the, uh, the end product, we'll definitely make that determination. Good. Well, thank thank you. That's all my questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? Yeah, I have a Commissioner question. Dewood, go ahead. Thank you. Um, Oyster Creek Diversion Channel. Yes, ma'am. It says that um, there will be a wet detention pond. Is that pond going to become a public amenity? Will there be trailheads, um, planting of some trees? Some, you know. I can only assume that it's going to follow in the same vein that uh, all of the improvements do, but um, you know it hasn't had the final design um, done yet, so um, we'll, we'll definitely take that into consideration when we do that. Yeah, uh, because it's with, a wet. So, right, right. You yeah. Know, so will there be a fountain? I don't trail, know. Trail, sure. parks, benches. I mean, I'll make note of that and uh, bring that up in the uh, in the meeting. If we're going to yeah. hold water, then might yeah, as I mean, well I, I, make use of it. Right, I, I doubt uh, that we're gonna make just a water hole, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll need funding partners for that, you know, those improvements too, so uh, yes. Yeah, that, that's all I have for now, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, Commissioner Hart? Uh, are, I, I didn't see any, but I, are there any projects that are in support of uh, development or redevelopment of any properties? Um, um, I mean, that would be more. My concern on PNZ is: Is there anything affecting, uh, you know, the development of un, un, undeveloped land right now, or land that is potentially redeveloped in the in this CIP period? So, uh, if you recall, we had the track two wastewater improvements um, that will, um, you know, potentially trigger uh, development there. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, I think, um, you know, all the improvements that are related to um, parks and recs and, and even drainage, um, you know, as long as we keep up and maintaining and rehabbing and keeping our facilities um, and assets um, renewed, I think that all can contribute to, to redevelopment because uh, developers are gonna see, hey, they keep, they keep their city top notch, let's go there. So, yeah, I think- yeah, They'll take that as a criticism. I was just wanting to get them- No, 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 there yeah, yeah, there definitely. Is on our radar that we need to look at that is Absolutely. Gonna, hey, it's gonna concentrate it in this area or that area, but okay, sure. thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Lundy. Mm -hmm. um, so two questions, one very broad and then one maybe more specific. Um, and Lisa, this may be more directed toward you or Lauren, I don't know. Um, my recollection of previous CIP reviews by the commission has been, you know, inch thick worth of paperwork with an extensive review. This is not that. So um, I'm just curious, maybe my recollection's wrong, um, but I'm just curious what has shifted, if anything, um, in terms of, of our role, um, and, and again, please correct me if my, if I'm. Right, so um, I'll, I'll also say one comment. Um, so th the purpose of uh, the, the scope of what we presented this evening, um, and I think I referenced it in the beginning as well, um, is that this is for any new projects that are happening um, in the five-year city of P. Anything that's not in here, um, that were carryovers or beyond, um, you know, in the out years that haven't changed, those are still there. That that CIP is still in place, sure. and we haven't revised or updated that, uh, and didn't didn't feel the necessity to to review that again because uh, those those haven't changed from what you guys have uh, seen and, and approved and recommended previously. So, uh, okay. it, 
anyone else want to address this packet sure, good versus evening, historical I'm sitting there trying to think through um, what we've seen presented in the past. I feel like um, this is in line, but we can definitely go back and look. There may have been in maybe years, years past, um, more years covered perhaps, um, but I feel like this is, is pretty in line with what we've seen in the last you know handful of years at least. So, but we can yeah. go back and look. And again, I think my my I'm I'm perfectly uh, happy if my recollection is is off. Um, I just seem to remember, um, you know, more of th these, you know, being more extended. But go ahead. Yeah, um, yeah, Jesse Lee, City Engineer. I think you your memory is actually correct. You know, you used to see more projects. It's more new projects in a sense because city. Before 2019, we issue COs, it's called Certified Obligations to Fund Any Property Tax-Backed Projects, we call it in general fund. But starting from 2019, city, because state legislature, we have to do GEO, General Obligation Bond. So city did an election in November 2019, which approved $90.76 million project. And those projects you have been seeing, you know, in the past couple of years, a few years. So it's not new projects anymore. So that's why it wasn't included in the package you're receiving today. So um, let me maybe repeat what I just heard, which is the, the, the projects that were approved as a part of the GEO bonds back in 2019, that package of projects is what had been put before us in previous years, yes. which has been more extensive. Now those are either in progress or completed, and so yes. therefore we're left with what's in front of us tonight. Is that fair? Correct. Okay. Um, thank you very much for that clarification. I, I had um, uh, a more specific question, which is um, probably a little unfair, uh, but uh, some of the our advanced materials. The can you just talk about like? The projects that were in original materials and then not in what we reviewed tonight and is there anything to be read into that anything the Commission should be aware of in terms of what was in original documentation versus what we're reviewing tonight no so um, the process that um, we went through to uh, arrive at the final list that you uh, the board has this evening is very dynamic um, sure. there's a lot of um, different um, uh, variables that went into it. Uh, for example, uh, there was a project on there for the uh, police uh, camera trailers, mm -hmm. if you recall that. Um, so that, uh, my understanding that that is being funded through a different vehicle as opposed to what was included in here. Um, and other things, um, you know, it's, it's recommendations from the budget office. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have all the details of that. Um, but, but yeah, so it's just different different dynamic things like that um, based on uh, continuous evaluation by staff of the best way to fund those, you know, maybe it's, uh, you know, they're not required anymore. Or like I said, the police trailers specifically, that was just going to be funded by a different source now. What so. you're saying is you've been very busy over the last week. A <laughs> um, couple of months. <laughs> Always. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. For sure. Um, no, thank you for, for the clarification. I don't have any questions um, on, uh, in any more specific detail. Thanks. Thanks. First of all, thank you very much for your presentation and thank you to the entirety of city staff for all of the planning work that goes into these projects in general and to provide these summaries to us. Could you talk briefly about what the process is that one of these projects goes through to end up on this list that we're voting on to recommend approval to city council? Sure, sure. Um, so there's a lot of different ways it happens. Like for example, kind of probably the low hanging fruit to explain is that, uh, you know, uh, possibly one of the construction projects that are on here maybe went through, um, um, you know, feedback from citizens, uh, complaints or um, concerns about a need, uh, or maybe there's a, um, a line, a water line maybe that has had multiple repairs in there and that's documented and kept in a, a database by public works. Um, and then we receive that information um, from engineering. We keep track of that. Um, and then we evaluate those for, you know, kind of rank them based on uh, different criteria and then uh, move into kind of the study phase of, uh, you know, what's the best way to approach fixing this area? You know, does it make more sense to go 
pay the lump sum today to replace it or keep putting band-aids on it. And um, so then, you know, it gets to a point where, you know, it's, there's no more band-aid space to put on there. So, uh, so then that, that, the, those complaints or those repairs turn into a project. And then uh, we look for other, um, you know, we do a study on that, look for any other um, areas in that, in that uh, region that need to be replaced. We, we make a project out of it, we do a design, uh, we take it to bid and, and, and build it and uh, keep moving for the next rehab project. So that's just one example of what okay. goes into that. I understand that some of it is some of it's reactive to complaints and needs. Some of it, as I was, I would call proactive. I mean, you're sure. looking at things that are going to that are not maybe right. issues today, but that are going to be issues in the coming years, and you want to address them before they get to be a problem, like a storage tank or a diesel right. tank right. or something yeah. like that. My question is: so you get something like that, and then is there a process to all the city departments get together? and come to some kind of consensus or like how do you I, I, my question is more literal like how does how do any of these good projects actually make it on the list because i assume there are some that aren't on the list oh yeah yeah okay. yeah so, so so there's a crystal what's ball the process no, I'm just look kidding. Like? <laughs> yeah so um it, it it's a process it's it uh i i don't want to use a, the word fight but uh it is um people now you, we're getting somewhere no. right yeah so uh you know we come we we spirited collect, discussion yeah, spirit. Thank you. Spirited discussion uh, that we actually send out forms to the, all the divisions, and, and there's a lot of criteria that they have to fill out in there. Um, you know, if, if somebody fills out one that has a you know life safety issue on there, of course that one's going to come to the top. Or if somebody, uh, you know, we have one that has a, a state or federal mandate that we have to meet, um, you know, code code issues by a certain date. Of course, that's going to come to the top as well. And then, of course, there's the, the master plans, you know, like the trail master plans. I mean, you know, you have um, kind of the look ahead of, you know, the five-year implementation plan of trails. And, um, you know, you've, you've got to set a plan and, you know, you got to have priorities on that too. So I, I it's, it's a really uh, involved process from everybody and different funding sources. Um, you know, it's like uh, SL4B has, you know, their, their kind of criteria of what they can fund. And then we have you know, water and sewer, you know, there's only certain things that that water and sewer money can fund. Um, so if you have those funds available, you know, to, it'll move those projects up because there's money for that. Uh, maybe there's not money for other things. I mean, it's, it's it, very did, dynamic Do you spread process. them around the districts in any format? I'm, I'm sure sorry? the council members have some kind of input, right? Or yeah, they, so... Um, so is it spread around the districts or is it just evaluated, just, ranked on a need basis, and then the chips fall where they may? And if I may add, it's actually based on a need basis. We have ranking criteria, and because we have city goals, if you meet certain city goals, you meet two or one, like safety, like you know, for city development, and for other goals. So we have that ranking. So when people, using her word, fighting, we say, okay, this project only meet two goals. The other one meets three goals. So that ranking probably a little higher, and the budget constraint process, you know, it's very stringent. Once even we rank them, you have to work, we have to work with budgeting office to see how much we can afford. So we do have a ranking list. So this is different category and we rank to one, two, three, four, five and see where we cut. You know, after that, we don't have money for it. And this is a complex and the dynamic process, the project lists keep changing. So we want to be as inclusive as possible to show you. But once we go to city council, we might have enough money. So they might see less than we will see. So that's the process we're going to. But city is moving forward to a more, I would say more, even more scientific determination about the investment. So we have an asset management program. We want to have a risk-based investment plan so we can invest in the, on the right asset at the right time and right amount. So those programs still in the, pro, in the development, we do use to identify uh, utility project like water line, wastewater and lift station, and those model already determined, already in use. So we use this model to prioritize investment for the utility assets. But for general fund, like streets, drainage, we haven't got that far yet. So we use a lot of you know, information from the field assessments from the ranking system we developed to determine what, to, what, what we can find. 
Right, but even for those, you, you may not, it may not be a risk, a risk assessment or a risk-based approach, but you're still scoring yes, and ranking yes, and prioritizing. Yes, Correct. exactly, yeah. Thank you for that. Great. Thank you. Commissioner Brown? One more question. You used two words in your explanation, budget and investment, and that's the one column we don't see on here. What, what role and when does that come into play, right? Because you can have one of these eat up a lot of budget. How to just... Yes, we get this type of question all the time from PNZ, and uh, I think um, because currently we don't have that information fully developed yet, and I think per our charter is uh, a council member making recommendations, decisions on what to fund at the end of the day, the, you know, based on the cost, based on the ranking, all that information. So the list showing tonight to you is not physically constrained yet. So we, it's just a plan. So this is the wish list. Yeah, this is, is a I'm plan. Hearing. We call it the plan. And the next column, the fiscal column. Gets yes, asked. yes. And it's being developed. So once we develop that and city council will say, okay, even as a priority, we don't have money. So we push to next year to fund it. Okay. So that could still happen. Thank yeah. you for the enlightenment. Sure. Other questions? Yeah, um, first of all, thank you for your presentation, Andre. It was, mm -hmm. it was good. Um, and I gotta say, I'm, I'm under the impression we're gaining on the drainage projects because there's only one here, so that's encouraging. Um, and also, uh, Parks has, has made a showing, uh, also good. Um, I think there'll be a lot of people pleased to see uh, them in the running. Uh, the others look to be a mix of facilities and prior, you know, uh, necessities and upgrade, you know, uh, proactive. I, I think it's a really balanced list, and I commend the staff for uh, uh, putting this together. I know it's it's the it's a two-page uh, symbol of a very arduous process. Process. So, uh, uh, good good uh, good work, and thank you. Thank you. All right, I'll make a motion recommending approval to the mayor and city council on the fiscal year 2023 to 2027 capital improvement program. Is there a second? Second. Got a motion and a second by Commissioner Landine. Any further discussion? All right, please vote. And that passes unanimously among the members present. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you again, staff. Much appreciated. Let me locate the agenda, and we are going on, I believe, to item 5A, reports. Planning and Zoning Commission lays on a report from the June 21st City Council meeting. That was me. There were two items that were approved by council pertinent to P&Z. One was the rezoning of the 22.327 acres on the Imperial West Business Park that we've obviously been before the commission before and the uh, that passed unanimously and the other was the conditional use permit for the mini warehouse and self storage on 1.7995 acres near US 90 in Sugar Park Lane that also passed unanimously and those were the only items that have been before P and Z before that were acted on by council at that meeting. Five B city reports staff report. Uh, real quick, we're finalizing uh, any items that might be on the July twelfth meeting, which is your next meeting date, and we'll let you know. Um, like you said, there are several of the items that you all have reviewed and made recommendations on now making their way through council. So um, you'll see that in the in the upcoming months, um, several of your projects that you've taken a look at, and that's all we've got. Motion to adjourn. Got a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. There is a second. All in favor? That passes. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Good night.